All right, so Bill Napier is in his third year. What's next for the Florida Gators? So when it comes to Florida and Billy Napier, there's a couple of different lenses we have to view them through. There's a couple of different lenses they get viewed through, rather. There's the macro level, which punchline culture has had a field day with, okay? The punchline culture is essentially anyone who can get some likes or some retweets or some clicks off of making a joke, they do that. They make a punchline, and there's that whole culture around it, and they have had a field day with Florida. Because they went 5-7, and seven, because of Billy Napier being from the Sunbelt Conference, people like to make jokes about Florida. So there's this perception of Florida and their 5-7 and seven season that Florida is not any good. That's the perception. However, context is crucial to any discussion, especially in college football. And here's what the context is for Florida in 2023. This is not trying to give you the glass half full view. This is just the facts. Florida was two plays away from being 7-5. and five. If they hold Missouri on that fourth down and long, win that football game against a highly ranked Missouri football team. If you hit that 44-yard field goal against Arkansas, that's another win. Okay, so that's two plays decided by one, or two games rather, decided by one play that made the difference on how we view their season. Now, I would also remind you that Florida, the expectation for them coming into this season in Vegas, the win total was over under five and a half wins. So we're looking at that five and seven record and people are making jokes and people are saying things about Billy Napier. Well, y'all, that was the expectation coming into the year. They would be around that five or six win mark. And they were, again, two plays away from being a seven-win football team. Now, woulda, shoulda, coulda, but you understand now the context within Florida is very, very important when we assess where they stand. Because a lot of people now pointing to year three, myself included, saying, all right, this is a, uh, a we-need-it kind of year in Gainesville. We need to see some positive things to get us encouraged about the future under Billy Napier and, quite honestly, his future as the head coach at Florida. Now, transparently, we pull for Billy Napier. We think he's a program guy with how he carries himself. I think he's had uh, a tough hand that he's been dealt with everything that he's had to try and build up at Florida because this is what I want to make sure we say too. There is this perception around what they haven't done acquiring talent and where the recruiting class ranks and then there's what was there before he got there and I'm speaking of course to Dan Mullen the way that he recruited and there's sort of become this narrative now that well Billy Napier actually isn't that great at acquiring talent period. Well hang on let's let's again context is key to this Florida did do pretty good with this 2024 class. I think them picking up uh, DJ and they picked up a couple other guys. So they did pretty good this year. I got to say they did pretty good this year. This discussion around Billy Napier. You recruit in a lot of ways by the ammunition that you provide by having success on the football field. Well, you have success on the football field by what's on your roster. Well, Billy Napier and what was on the roster previously, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't deep, especially on the defensive side of the football. So Billy Napier's been trying to build this thing up and have something to go recruit with, and it's been a little bit of a trial and error. So what I'm trying to say here is, again, I'm not, I'm not making excuses for Billy Napier. I'm just saying we got to approach this with the right context. Because in 2024, that schedule is absolutely brutal, especially in November. But I want us to understand now, there's been a lot of things that you can point to at Florida in 2023 that are positives that I think you have to tie to coaching. Graham Mertz, what he was at Wisconsin and what he has been at Florida in one year, night and day difference. I think you attribute that to coaching. Eugene Wilson, stud true freshman for them this past season, making him a focal point of the offense, recognizing, hey, this is a ball player. We got to make sure we involve him consistently. That's coaching battling back against South Carolina down 10 in the fourth and finding a way to win that football game. That's coaching. That's also buy-in. So you can say what you want about being five and seven and have the punchline culture and all that. But like you look at Florida, it's not all negatives within the context. There's a lot to be encouraged by and a lot to draw from. But again, year three is going to be where we start to make some definitive statements about what they are and about who Billy Napier is as the head coach at Florida. And I think that's fair. So going back to context here, talking about the Florida fans, what what are your expectations for the Florida Gators this year? Let me know in the comments below. Those two plays being the difference in two games, that's the key thing I want us to focus on here because five and seven from a macro level sounds unfortunate. It is unfortunate. There's nothing positive about it, but let's not pretend that there wasn't an opportunity there for them to have a very different story being told this season. Because if they got to seven wins, then we're saying, oh, great, okay, that's a one-win improvement. 
Billy Napier's hasn't it trend in the right direction. Year three is a show me year. So if they got blown out in seven games and had a five and seven season, you would talk about them differently than you would right now with those two games swinging a different direction. I'm not trying to overly harp on those, you know, on that record, but I just I think that's really important that we all get aligned on exactly what just happened in Gainesville this past season. So looking forward now, and that's kind of the, the point I want to get to here. What has to happen for Billy Napier? I think you have to check the box for phase three in year three. Because year one, you kind of get to do, you know, essentially whatever you had to do in year one. Like year one, no one's really tying you to when it comes to your achievements or lack thereof or whatever. Like year one, you chalk it up to be in year one. Year two. Now, if you coach prime, hey, coach prime, they want to coach prime to go into the natty. Now, <laughs> the goal was to have progress. Seven wins was what we said at the beginning of the year they needed to get. They did not get to that. So phase two was, in a lot of ways, for a lot of people, I think in-house at Florida too, I think it was a mission not accomplished. But with that being said now, you can fail an exam and still ace the final if it's cumulative. Like just because they had a poor year two doesn't mean year three can't be what they need it to be. And what I'm trying to say here is the results on the field don't always correlate to what's happening from a growth perspective in-house. I'm not telling you what it is or what it isn't, but I am saying that's something we have to consider here going forward under Billy Napier and for this team here in year three. I think for Billy Napier and for Florida to be encouraged about where they're headed, I think eight wins is probably a realistic thing to talk about. Now, do y'all think they can get to eight wins this year, Florida? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I got to look at the schedule. When it comes to the line in Vegas that I think we'll get in the preseason, looking at the schedule, I think it'll be somewhere around an over-under of six. But I think for them to get to that eight-win mark, they have to be somewhere in the range of six and one heading into November. Because in November, that would mean you have to get two of games against Georgia, at Texas, LSU, Ole mm. Miss, and at mm. Florida State. Okay, so through those first seven. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's, a, that's a rough stretch. That's a super rough stretch. <laughs> Hey, that's rough. That's rough, man. Got some tricky games. You got Miami. Who knows what they are with Cam Ward. You're at Tennessee, Kentucky. There, there's, there's a lot of things within that first seven that could be tricky, but I'm just saying, I think that's the road you have to really look at because November will be brutal. November will be absolutely brutal by nature of the opponents that I just mentioned. But if you can get to eight wins, I think you feel good about the trajectory. I think you feel good about the progress. And I think we talk about this past year as an unfortunate happening, but we think about Billy Napier in Florida getting back on track. Last thing I'll say, it's very tough to win in the SEC. Like, I almost want to grade Billy Napier on a, on a curve, you know, because, like, you're adding Texas to the conference. You're adding Oklahoma to the conference. And you have to play at Texas this year if you're Florida. And it's very different to build a program in a different conference than it is to build it in the SEC where you got guys like Brian Kelly, Kirby Smart, Steve Sarkeesian. Like the, like the conference itself is so difficult to win in regardless of where you are from a roster standpoint, but to have to recruit against those guys and be able to compete against those guys on a Saturday in and Saturday out, you know, a reality. Nobody's making excuses for Billy Napier. No one's saying it's okay or excusing it, but I do think it deserves, again, a little bit of an extra context component added to it when you assess what he is and what Florida is going forward. So all that's to say, we openly pull for Billy Napier right here on this program. I, again, I love the way that he has not backed down from anything that's, no pun intended, has not backed down from anything that uh, has come his way at Florida. And I would love nothing more than for them to go out and win eight football games and for Graham Mertz to take another step forward and for them to have some success this year. But again, I think that's probably what it will take for you to feel secure moving forward into the future i'm not making a prediction on his job security or anything like that but i am saying i think eight wins would be the place that you would feel comfortable at 